Okay, welcome back to Las Vegas, SiliconAngle.tv is the cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events, cover it anywhere around the world, Barcelona, Boston, Massachusetts, Orlando, California, and we go out and extract a signal from the noise. And we're here at Hewlett Packard's Gen 8 announcement, and I'm um, John Furrier with founder of SiliconAngle, SiliconAngle.tv, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we are back with a multi-time cube guest, Dave Donatelli. David is the uh, Executive Vice President and General Manager of HP's uh, Enterprise Server Storage and Networking Group. Uh, welcome again, Dave. Hey, great to be here, guys. We've been talking about convergence. We first had you in the Cube in Barcelona a um, couple, couple of years ago, and uh, you know a lot of we've been having the convergence conversation. This is a new chapter in that uh, conversation with this announcement. Great technology. We just kind of gave grades across the board. Me, Dave, and David Floyer here, <laughs> Wikibon. So, a lot of good, a lot of high marks, um, and. Uh, this is really changing the, the landscape of the data center. What are you seeing as the leader of the groups, the convergence group? What's going on in the data center market, the environment? What are some of the dynamics that you're seeing, the top mega trends? Well, I think uh, it, it all depends what type of data center you're talking about. I mean, we, we see large cloud-based and single application companies clearly have set out a whole new segment of the marketplace that's very exciting for us and one that we play very large in. Um, we see traditional data center undergoing a lot of change as well. I mean, they're figuring out how to make their current applications relevant in today's kind of mobile and cloud-based world. Uh, they have certainly a lot of challenges in getting more agile and more challenges always because of the economy around cost. What we're so excited about with today's announcement was really we set out to take on the challenges that that, in, that segment has seen for years, which is how to make servers easier to administer, how to make sure they stay up more often, how to take the burden of uh, really running industry standard servers away and automate it in a way that you would want to do. We've talked in the past, and you've, you've mentioned candidly on one of the interviews we did with you that product leadership was job one for you guys. Yes. Um, talk about this announcement from the product leadership standpoint. There's a lot of you know, innovations involved, there's hundreds of innovations. And how does that translate into the benefits of the market? Because it's a complex market, existing, a lot of legacy infrastructure in there in terms of servers racked in there. How does this new tech vector into the marketplace? Well, the way we really look at it is we, we think of all of our technologies as building blocks. So whether it's a server technology, a networking technology, a storage technology, they're the foundation. We want each to be best of breed. And we want any customer who looks and says, I'm going to do a comparison of that technology for HP to always win that technology comparison. And then once we're done with that, then we put it together in that converged architecture where you get even more value of having you know, all that together. In servers, you know, we're very proud of the fact that we believe in the last 100 days, we presented a whole new server architecture to the industry end to end. Moonshot we announced November 1st. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but that's when we're talking about, you know, ARM-based and Atom-based servers, really next-gen type servers that we're very excited about. Then we bought out Odyssey, which was really talking about how do we bring Linux and Windows and make them safe for really high-end applications that they haven't been able to get to before. And then finally today, if you look what we did with Voyager, it was really how do we take the traditional industry standard server, the, the bread and butter server for businesses all over the world, and again, do more than just have a new processor. Change the entire architecture so that it's a self-supporting, self-sufficient server. So David, um, you're three years in now almost to uh, HP, right? Goes fast. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, obviously been busy. What, um, you talked today in your keynote, you talked about you know, the, the progress in networking, mm -hmm. uh, mentioned the, the channel affinity, which I wasn't aware that there was that much activity going through the channel. You talked about storage, three par store once, and you talk, just talked now about the 100 day. What are you most proud of? Oh, that's, a great, that's a great question. Um, well, I tell you, from a pure manager point of view, the people. I, I think, um, you know, the HP people really want to make a difference in the industry. And, and really want to add value out there. And I, and I think that's, that is, you know, what I'm proud of is I'm really proud is to lead that group and all the contribution they make. I think on the technology side, what I'm most proud about is the fact that we were bold enough to set out a different agenda for the industry. When we were talking about convergence, it was new. Frankly, it was risky. And I can tell you, although we are very confident in it, you know, the first time you go present something new like that, you could have everybody say, you're crazy and we're never going to buy that. And um, we're very, very pleased that when we did announce that, that people agreed with us. They thought it added value, customers liked it, and um, it's been a fun ride for the last two and a half years, continuing to progress where the technology's headed. Now, now, we've known each other for a number of years. I've seen your career advance, and so I was talking to somebody earlier, just asking, hey, how's Dave doing? Is he, is he, is he nervous before his keynote? Oh, no, he's, he's used to these things. So, what makes you nervous? <laughs> 
Um, not keynotes, although yeah. I enjoy keynotes. <laughs> yeah. it, it, the reason why keynotes don't make me nervous is that, you know, what I'm, what I'm pleased with is our strategy has been very consistent. So it's not like we have to go tell a new story every time we do a keynote, because we do a lot of speaking, as you know, in our industry. Right. We're able to just talk about how that story is progressing and how it's benefiting customers and partners. I think the thing that I'm always nervous about is execution. And, and to me, it's the one element you control as a company, you know, is how well you're executing. How are your programs on time? Do they have the innovations you want? Are you getting done what you set out to do? And, um, you know, as you say, we're, we're creating things. Creativity is fraught with challenge and risk at all times, especially when you're pushing the envelope. And that's what I spend most of my time really worried about, is making sure that we know we have a point of view of where we think the direction of the industry is going, a point of view of how we take customers there, and then executing around all of our product sets to make sure everything we do are su is supporting and reinforcing that point of view. So to that end, I mean, talk about cloud. Cloud's, a, a, to me anyway, kind of a wild card. Um, you, you know, on the one hand, the private cloud piece, I think is pretty clear. Yes. You know, and you guys are executing great there. I think there's a big question mark around this whole public cloud thing and cloud service providers and what that all means to the, to the distribution channel. What are you seeing in your customer base in terms of the whole cloud thing? Well, I think, I think, if you, I think you have to separate customers from partners and, and then, you know, again, segment the industry more. I think, as you said, for customers, it's pretty clear. The majority are going private cloud now. It's, it's the safest thing for them to do. It's, you know, when I talk to them around the world, that's what they're doing first. They also, though, if you talk to all of them, want to do some form of hybrid. They want to have burst capacity. They want to be able to, you know, when they're busy at the end of the year or, or doing financial processing to go out there. But that's kind of a phase two for them. Partners, on the other hand, are starting to figure out how they play in both of those segments. As a partner, do I want to have my own cloud that I could then rent burst time to? And, and we are starting to see lots of partners do that. And then second of all, as a partner, am I, do, am I gaining the skills to go build one of those clouds for customers? And again, we've seen a lot of progress there in the last year. The third segment of the market that I will speak to again is the standalone folks. These are the, the Facebooks, the Yahoos, I use them as example names, who are, you know, um, Zynga is another example. Mm -hmm. Large companies, huge server storage networking footprints, typically running one or two custom applications. And they're, they're kind of in the, a whole separate segment. And we play in all three of these segments. What's interesting is this segment is driving new deployment models, new server models, new storage models. And I think the exciting thing about that is not only is that exciting segment, but that's bringing innovation that you'll see come across to traditional data centers pretty soon. Yeah, because Moonshot and, and Voyager kind of you know point to that that first piece, right? I mean, Moonshot, that, very much so. Yeah, very much so. And yeah. Voyager, I guess to a certain extent in terms certain of the automation, extent. right? Yes, absolutely. So, good. so two years ago when we were in Barcelona, we asked a question and you kind of gave us the answer, Well, and that's not my group. I think you might know the question we asked. We asked, what's the, going on with big data in your group? Because the, um, big data was in that storage kind of, the early days of big data, this is two years ago, and now it's completely morphed into a category yes. um, with the Clouders out there and obviously Vertic within HP. Um, there's a huge data story in this announcement, data being used for analytics, and Splunk is going to go public at a billion dollar plus valuation, and they're doing big data for log files. And, and so it's obviously analytics are really important. How does that, how does that big data segment look to you? Because I mean, it's got a storage feel to it. You see the file systems out there like Hadoop and, and uh, Map, MapReduce and all these other technologies. It kind of is kind of coming to the edge. So is that in... How does that enter into your equation? Well, it, as you know, we play we play in big data both with software. If you look at Vertica or, or, you, or you look at some of the other products Autonomy has, all around the big data space, and that's the pure application of it. But the other thing is to enable that, you need a different storage architecture. You need a different server architecture in order to get the price performance that's really required out there. So when I spoke about that segment, the cloud-based segment, yep. what's interesting is a lot of the technologies we're developing there are going to play directly into big data. The other thing I'll tell you is that tra traditional technologies that have been around in storage, in servers, have to change for big data. And again, that's why we're so excited that we're already so big in this other new segment, because you know we have taken the step of building much more power efficient servers, much more scalable servers, and then storage that can meet the price points and the density requirements that you see in big data. So you feel good that you guys are positioned well for that, kind of where the puck is going to be, if you will. Yes. And, yeah. I, and, and if you look at us as a company, right, where are we're areas where the puck is going that we have huge investments in? We have huge investment in cloud, and you're going to see more coming out about that this year. Security is a huge area. I mean, if you look at the fact now that 
you know, security issues have moved from a couple 16-year-olds with pimples in their bedroom trying to have fun with corporate America to now state-sponsored organizations who are looking to break in. This is a whole new realm yeah. that I think people haven't really digested yet. So that's a big area for us. Then finally, whether you call it big data or in addition, its cousin unstructured data, that's clearly where the puck is going, and, and with autonomy and vertical ass, and vertical assets, that's where we're really playing. Yeah, and you, uh, the other thing I like about your strategy, it's clean. I mean, you're infrastructure for whatever, whatever workload, application. That's right. As John said, skating to the puck. Okay, Dave Donatelli, uh, EVP, storage, networking, everything servers uh, at HP. Congratulations on your success. Three years now, uh, we're big fans. I uh, love the support, appreciate uh, the interview, and uh, great announcement. Always great to see you guys. Nice great. to see you, David. Thanks so much. Okay, okay we'll be 